Welcome back to the Compound Podcast. This is episode 124. 124 or 5? 125 for the Compound Podcast. It's presented by Parse Rum. Uh, I love Parse, you love Parse. Maybe Dakota put Parse in his coffee. Just kidding. He's got a game tonight. That's, I, I did not. I did not. <laughs> Usually... Oh, Athletic Greens. Uh, I No free ads. No free ads. I they bet. are not paying for an ad this week. Um, usually we're recording post-game. Usually we got some zombies after a long nine innings in the show or a quick nine innings if you're not in the show because oh. apparently they're flying. <laughs> How about this, though? Sunday, you talk about quick games. We had a 13 to 12 game. It took three hours and 50 minutes on a getaway day. Three hours and 50 minutes. That's going to mess up their skew. I saw that and I was like, please don't tell me Dakota threw in that game. Please. I, it got to the point where I was like, you know, I'm good. Like, I, 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 I'll, tell, I'll take another day. You know what? Let me. It's all right. Somebody else can throw. No, I did not. I did not. Because I They tweeted it and I was like, oh, no, please. No, <laughs> no I was I was not a part of it. So, back to what I was saying. Sorry. We are doing a morning recording. We all have our coffee. Some of us have green stuff that we won't talk about unless they're paying. Oh, and coffee. Double. A lot of liquid going on over there. Uh, we, got some, we got some things to get into. Um, I am in Toronto. Hey. We all on um, the road. Or is Zach at home? No, I'm home. Ah. Zach's home. Dakota's in Columbus. Correct. Your home state, some may say. It depends. No one, it depends no one really knows. Day, it depends which day of the week it is. Yeah, no one really knows. It might be Ian's home state. Yep. I know that you're a Spartan and uh-huh. you don't like anything else, but mm-hmm. Ohio State, Notre Dame with a day game, on Saturday. You don't even you don't have any interest in even experiencing. Maybe you want both teams to lose. Ian. Okay, Ian, 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 has Ian. a shirt that Ian. I hope both teams lose. But you don't even want to experience the the festivities. May I speak? Yes. You ready? You ready for why I don't want to experience it, Ian? Because I've been here before. I've came here for a game. I've been to the horseshoe or whatever it's fucking called. You know, I've, gone. I've gone. I paid two hundred dollars to go watch the Spartans play him. And guess what? The score was at halftime. Thirty five zero Ohio State. And there was an old lady above us and she'd bop us on the head with a program every time Ohio State would score. <laughs> so, no, I won't go back in that fucking place. I fucking hate it. No. Well, I appreciate that you have a reason why you don't want to go. Yes, that is. That is I, I think it'll be a great game, but no, I will not be going back in there. We're going to welcome in friend of the pod, Jan Gomes. Jan has been listening to the pod for months, actually, maybe since spring training. So I think he actually knows Zach and Dakota and Tom probably better than uh, better than most of our guests when they come on for the first time. 100%. Welcome. My life. Yeah, we're live. We're actually we started the oh. recording and now we're we're right <laughs> oh. into it. So you're just you're into the fire. I, I I'm starstruck right now. I I'll be honest. This is yeah, this you're is a, a big great podcast honor. guy, huh? I'm a huge podcast guy. I love it. Uh, got to got to listen to you guys do it. Uh, seen some legends. Uh, I'm I'm very nervous about this. To be honest with you. Speaking of speaking of legends, John, you just uh you just. Completed ten years of service, correct? That is right. I uh, I am the very old guy here. Yes. Oh, hats off! That is incredible. congratulations. <laughs> oh, Jan thank you, is man. Actually, I appreciate that. Jan's now the oldest guy in the team. Oh, yeah. I yeah, realize that when I'm here. Is, is, <laughs> is Wade is I, Wade older? Or are you the oldest guy? Wade's older by a, a couple months, but right now on the active roster, I am the oldest guy on the team. So, uh, wow. so listen up, okay? <laughs> you know, uh, I got some wisdom to share. How, how, how weird is it after 
we're back in Toronto. You started here. You got caught up when you were 23. 23, 24. Yeah. 24. And, and now coming back, being the, you know, 10 years vet on the team, like that happens quick. But, but how crazy is it to look back on your time here and just how far you've come? So um, I was actually sitting with their travel secretary yesterday. Um, his name's Mike Shaw, and we're hanging out. And he's like, hey, uh, how old are you now? I was like, well, I'm 35. I'm the oldest guy on the team now. And he's, he's looking back, and he's like, wow. I was like, I don't know if that makes, you know, hey, look, I'm, I'm old or you guys are old. Because he was here when I was here. Um, so, yeah, I did uh, – it happens really fast. Uh, I'm still waiting for my Toronto tribute video. It still hasn't happened, but uh, it you know they had a good one for Stroman last night. Stroman got the tribute video. Jan actually got a really cool one in DC, but he said after leaving Toronto, they never gave him one. It's kind of messed up. Yeah, I mean it was a it was a a soft one year here. So, but uh, they might give me a minor league one more than a big league one. Did you get one in Cleveland? <laughs> It's a very good question. No, that that one wow. really that one really upset me. Uh, I mean, I'm over it, but uh, I got traded from Oakland uh, from DC to Oakland, so it happened like very quickly. That's the only excuse I'm giving them. That's like crazy. A two week prep. Yeah, it was a six years in uh, in Cleveland. Pretty sure I got to play against Short in his right in his first. I think I do remember him playing there with uh, Detroit. Yeah, we um we played you guys at in Detroit last year. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's funny, I <laughs> when Ian told us you're coming on, I um and I was actually talking to Scott Efros too, and you know, he's a big fan of Jan Gomes. And I said, Hey, how do you think he'll respond? Or A, do you think he'll remember by chance that I walked up to the plate when he was catching? And B, I was like, you know, I said hi to Jan and he wasn't, you know all, you know, giddy and smiley. I was like, Hey, Jan, you know, how you doing? He was like, Hey, I'm like, Oh, all right. Good luck. Ooh. Go get him. Oh, that's a, um, well, I apologize for that. Uh, no. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I must've had a, you know, I'm usually, I usually don't take my abats to the plate, but that must've <laughs> been, uh, on the second row, that must've been a bad feel on your part. Oh, no, no, no. Like no. shook out with bases loaded. And you're, you're worried about your debut. How selfish of you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Now, uh, good. Well, I do apologize. No. Next time, I'll make sure to give a get up and give you a hug. <laughs> a little Morel, hug the catcher. Morel, the friend, friendliest guy in the league. Friendliest guy in the big leagues. They were. I actually saw. Speaking of that, I saw a clip on Twitter this morning that Dan Schulman was going through Morel's like not antics, but like his routine. You know, it's like. Oh, you know, I was brief that Morel is the nicest guy in baseball. He'll say hi to everybody on his way up there. And like, as he's doing it, he says hi to the catcher. The umpire takes his hat off to the, to the pitcher and he's like, oh, there it is. And it was just perfect timing. It's every time. It's every time. There's, it's consistent. Pep, have you guys talked to Assad much? He's also the nicest guy of all time. Assad, Assad is very, very nice. Um, he's does been, he he's you, been pretty quiet. Does he make you nervous on the mound every time he, like twitches his elbow. Have you noticed that yet? <laughs> yeah, I After, did. Like every pitch, yeah. he literally like shakes out his elbow. You know wow, what else? That, I saw? that is so funny. I you know what else I saw? Day too. I saw him in his debut, like third, fourth, and fifth inning, putting hot stuff on his arm, not underneath, <laughs> not underneath, just in the dugout. Didn't just care. Putting red hot on. Red hot, right yeah. in the dugout. He had his own start. little his own little bit of red hot, and he was just <laughs> lathering it on. I'm like this guy's this guy's ready. He cannot feel. I'm just glad. I'm just glad he. I'm just glad he put the gloves on. He, he, yeah. He put he put the gloves on, started rubbing it in, and started cracking his elbow. And that's kind of funny to cut. I I noticed that uh, it was like in the start of the fourth, and he's starting to do this. I'm like, oh my god! Seriously, this guy's gonna pull the shoot right now with us. And like, we literally had you know, our trainers. We had our trainers tell PJ, be like, hey, just so you know, like, he's not hurt when he does this. Like, he does it all the time. Because I'm like, I watched him one time warming up, and I was like, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, you keep shaking out that elbow quite a bit. But it's just like a little, like, twitch he has. He does it all the time. Dakota, 
we just got two new players. Estrada and oh, yes. Little. Yes. Uh, as, I, I lived with Little. As a fellow pitcher, mm-hmm. Estrada said you guys are boys too. Would you like to give us a scouting report on uh, our two new additions? Well, I call Brendan Little Zach Britton because he's <laughs> quite literally Zach Britton. He throws 95 mile an hour sinkers and then Turbos? they wipe out curveball. Yeah, it's it's gross. Are they active? Uh, oh, yeah, little yeah. is Estrada will be today. Oh wow! That's... Per Twitter, Ooh, per Twitter. Breaking news. That's breaking per news. Twitter. Breaking news. <laughs> that's per Twitter. Uh, and then Estrada throws invisibles at ninety nine. He has like he, he, he has throws, like twenty two inches of vert from what yeah. I remember. He throws ninety six to ninety eight with twenty two inches of vert, and no one ever hits it. Can you explain to the listener what twenty two inches of vert is? Because that's I don't think it, that's hitting. It's more so something you guys can explain as a hitter. Like you see it differently. Like I just, you, like I just you know literally think trouble. a fast. You go ahead, Zach. Or Zach, you say it. I just know I'm in trouble when I see on our scouting report that anything over 17 and a half inches of vert, which means it's going to play like it's obviously it's not going to rise, but it's going to play like it's the ball is rising and you have to really match the plane. And like it's really difficult. That's what all like. For the li- listeners like Eric Cole, Verlander, all those guys who throw the heaters at the top of the zone. Obviously, Jan, you catch these guys pretty regularly mm-hmm. who have that, I'm assuming. You can tell a difference. Like when people say like, oh, my God, how are they missing 95 right down the middle? It's because it's appearing like it's four inches lower than it really is. So, yeah, a, Higher, a good yeah, way to explain it is like, uh, you know, when you take your first swings off an iron mic, like it's shooting fastballs and you're like – clicking it up, clicking it up. That's that's the only way I know how to explain it, that it's yep. it's not coming back down. It's just staying pretty straight. But the whole vert thing, I only heard about this, the numbers last night. To be really? Brutally what? honest with you. I, Toronto, I, man, Toronto has vertical I, break on the – Yeah. Yeah. So the Jordan Romano uh, for them comes in, and me and Drew Smiley are sitting next to each other look, looking at it, and he throws his heater in – it says, what was it, like 17.8 or 18-something. And then I'm like, is that supposed to be good? And he's like, oh, yeah, that's that's like elite elite fastball. That means it, it's not coming back down and blah, blah, blah. And he said he gets a positive vertical break on his curveball. <laughs> I was if, 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 if you know, like, uh, Smiley throws like a reverse – kind of curveball and sometimes it, it registers as a changeup. sometimes he throws a curveball and sometimes he throws a curve change yeah it's like it like spins around and it, it, it just messes with the hitter's eyes and what the f- <laughs> yeah and we're supposed yeah. to hit people who throw slider spin but move the opposite way what is it, it exactly like, like 18 and up is good on vertical yeah, I think break. like 17 is like – or 16 and a half is league average or something like that. And I'm pretty sure Estrada has like 20 or it's, 22. It's 22. I was watching in the dugout Dang. the other day, and it's it's 22. Oh, wow. so it's, I'd, like, uh, I'd like to see that. The, I uh, saw a tweet. He has struck out 40% of the batters he's faced this year. I think that's pretty good. Shoo. Um, that was that was the big issue with the sticky stuff, with the sticky icky, was that yes. guys, were, guys were getting – uncuman amount of vertical break on their heaters and it would never come down everybody's seen like a video of wiffle ball or what's tom what's the thing that you do blitz ball blitz ball yeah we blitz do blitz ball. ball everybody's seen like a video of blitz ball from john boy media our parent company we love them if you haven't seen it tom edits them go watch that's a little plug for the company tom you're welcome uh where they throw the rising heater where it starts at the guy's shoes and ends up at his neck that uh is basically what it feels like when a guy has 22 25 inches of vertical as they say vertical break which is just a hilarious thing vertical break it doesn't break it doesn't break it goes up (laughs) it's literally basically basically, yeah the higher it is the more true it stays like no ball can actually go up but like the higher it is the more it's just staying directly on plane like last year we faced Toronto or we faced Robbie Ray when he was going off and he has, I'm pretty sure he has pretty high vert. And I, I struck out on a pitch that I thought was down. Like I would have like, if I wasn't, if I was in triple, I would have turned around the ump. Like, I don't know about that. Like there's no way that's a strike. And then the iPad, you can see it the next inning and it had like that much of the zone. And I'm like, there's no way 
and you can just see the ball is just standing that, on a was that, line. Was that pre sticky? No, it was post. And yeah, it's a good good. Wait, feeling. in the show, you guys have to wait an inning to see where the pitch was. Not anymore. You can. Oh. Yes, you do. Because because we get it right um, away in our dugout. Do you have Trackman, Dakota? Yeah, and it's mayhem. Yeah, that's see, the coach is just the coaches why, look at it and could just scream at the ump, be like, "That's a fucking strike!" Like you're wrong. I'm looking at it right here. We used to have that at the beginning of the year. You could see the next hitter. You know, you could go in and look at it, and then they put the iPads on half inning delay, so you can't see the broadcast feed for a half inning because because that's what was happening. People are holding iPads up and yelling at umpires, and now you have to wait a half inning. Yeah, could you imagine just sense. standing there in the dugout like? Jim, I told you. Jim. <laughs> Jan, do you have any good uh, ejection stories? The good what? Ejection stories? No, I I um I have never been ejected. But I have That's been a nice I know, guy. I, I just don't have it in me, man. Like I, I have to sit with them right on my ear all the time. I don't have it in me because I when I explode. I am really, I say things I don't mean and I will, I will, you know, go too far and then I, where I cannot take it back. So, uh, but I have been on the, in a way, receiving end of a lot of, uh, uh, the guy that's catching and then I had to get him pushed to throw into the game and, you know, yeah, uh, those are, those are, uh, a lot of fun there. That's a, a very sore day the next day for me because, the prepping doesn't go into it as much as uh, I usually do. I want to hear before I ask you this, <laughs> we need to talk about CSG. An expert and impartial third party authentication and grading service for sports cards. This is their first time compound sponsor here. Are you into sports cards, John? Um, I do have a, a yeah, I, I am. I am. Well, not like a, not something. like a major collector, but I'm listening. Well, if if you need to get them authenticated and graded, CSG is your company because they have consistent consistently the best turnaround times and pricing among leading third party sports card grading services. Okay, and they're backed by the same ownership and senior management team behind NGC, PMG, and CGC largest coin paper money and comic book certification services so if you're into any of that stuff csgcards.com get 15 percent or 15 dollars off yearly memberships with code compound that's csgcards.com 15 dollars off yearly memberships with promo code compound tom nice work on that new sponsor we're really making a push here this question is presented by csg cards Code compound. When we were playing the Cardinals the other day, you were catching. Mm -hmm. There was a called by the umpire over the top. One of these, uh, Nolan Arenado. You swung. Did he swing? <laughs> Probably not. Definitely. By, de by if, if we pull out the rule book, by definition, which is the most weirdest definition i think if you read it, it's like the attempt at a pitch he did attempt at it he but go ahead he, but go uh, ahead so <laughs> he he does some would say he didn't swing some would say he did umpire and he does not appeal it he comes over the top you swung nolan lost his mind and jan is back there he looks up oh and like got out of there real quick what was your reaction when he came flying back holding suitcases uh, and right in the ump's face? <laughs> well, it, if you look at the video, because this surprises me really, because I mean, the ball is like two, three balls out. He goes and attempts at it. Luke Farrell's on the mound. They don't know how he throws yet. They're still trying to figure him out. It's a big moment in the game. It's like second big. and third. Nolan Arnado's up. We, I think we just somehow got Goldsmith out the bat before, like, these guys are like, it's the middle of their lineup. Um, and ball down and away. I'm on the, you know, the one knee stance because it's a big thing now. And I catch it, try to frame it. And then he attempts it. And next thing I know is, yes, he did. <laughs> and I was like, and Aronado, and the guys asked me in the dugout, what do you say? I was like, 
<laughs> That's all I heard. <laughs> I did not hear. So, and when the video is happening, he turns around and you've seen Nolan Arenado blow up before. He goes absolute bonkers, man. He gets so I, I'm a little older, as we've already pointed it out. I'm the oldest guy. And I'm trying to get up from a knee to get out of his way because he is trying to absolutely crush this umpire. You can see it in the video. I'm like, try to quickly get out of the way. Like, go for it, bud. You, you do your thing. Tom, and you got to find is... that video because Jan's face, there's a moment where he looks up at Arenado and he goes, oh, and he gets out, he gets oh, out of there. Me... Nope. You you're you're it. It's so good. Is there anything yeah. worse, though, as a hitter when the home plate ump says you went and it's like actually close? It's funny because I, it's like obviously the first base guy has a better view, but he's like a hundred feet away. Oh, I've had umpires literally tell me in the field, they're like, Can you see that? I'm like, I mean, kinda. And they're like, see, I can't see shit. Like I'm basically yeah. guessing. I was like, okay, good. Well, and especially in triple A, there's only three umps. So like they're if there's a lefty hitting, the guy's standing next to second base and he's out there like, I don't fucking know. Why are you yeah. asking me? Like, how the hell am I supposed to know? But is that better or worse than the home plate ump? Like calling it because how can the home plate up tell that's what like i don't i don't want to get fined for like what austin hedges said or anything but like same th like it's just like sometimes you feel like they just want to make the call right then and there and you're like why would you not just ask i, I don't just ask yeah i just i i really respect the guys that some guys say that they're so locked in on calling balls and strikes that they basically appeal every single one unless it's like Unless the dude basically, yeah, so yeah. like there's so because I've I've talked to some guys who are like I'm so locked in on balls and strikes like I I don't know I I just appeal every single one and so I think that probably makes the most sense and is the most um, I don't know. The, well, I mean, I, I think the, they're far away, but they still have the best angle, right? Yeah, yeah. there are. Um, from talking to umpires, they're told to make the call. Like they want the home plate umpire to make really? the call. Wow. Whenever that happens, I know. Whenever that happens to me, I turn around in such disappointment that maybe <laughs> I did go, man. Like the other day, we we're facing, I probably did, I most likely did swing yeah. against Devin Williams, but I just turned around and like, I've been busting my butt so much back here for you. And you just freaking quickly ring me up, man. I'm like, Give it to somebody else, so I'm not mad at you, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. But I think they're, um, from what I hear, um, I hope it has changed because I always feel like just ask because I know when I'm catching. There's times when the guy goes to take a swing, and I'm like, oh, like, I'm not, I don't have the best view of it, but you know, I, I always want them to, to check. Yeah. Just check. Yeah. Just speaking check. of it, everybody, oh, happy. Go ahead. Sorry. No, like speaking of, you know, talking to umpires and working with them all day, do you ever feel like you have to be like, like extremely careful talking to umpires or like, if you know, they're having a bad day when you're just like, is there a point in time where you're just like, all right, enough's enough. Like I have to say something to this guy. It's the fifth inning. We're getting squeezed all day, but you know, in the first and second, you're like, all right, I can't really say anything because I'm going to screw everybody else who comes into this game. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a good question. I, 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 I have like the most like normal relationships that I can with umpires. I don't hold back. I, but, and I hope that they don't hold back with me either. I try to have as much honesty conversation as I can with them. Some umpires even rely on me to tell them whether it was a strike or ball. I'm like, you know, that I think that's like, a, you know, a pitch close, but I'll let you know. And when I do let them know, I'm like, Hey, that, that was like, it might be a strike in the, in your buffer zone, you know, I, I'm sure you, we've heard this plenty of times, but there's a lot of times where you have to kind of like guide umpires and not, no, I don't want to say guide them, but like, let them know like, Hey, this guy's ball is moving a lot more, like stick with it, man. Like, Hey, you know, he runs it back a lot. His curveball comes from up top a lot. Like, like stay with it. Don't give up. Cause the, the thing with umpires now, man, like guys are throwing 99 mile an hour splinkers in a hundred mile. Like, I don't even know what, a splinker is i think i just saw it on twitter some guy from minnesota throws a hundred mile an hour sinker splitter like sinker splitter thing like those are hard pitches for umpires to make the calls but that's why i say like there, there's a lot of umpires that i give a lot of respect to that they're still in the game and they can 
kind of make the calls right. You know, there's a, a high percentage of some tough calls, but I do try to give them like the, the most honesty feedback of like, Hey man, like there's, there's some pitchers that are catching close. Don't give up on them. And then sometimes I'm like, Hey man, like, do I need to get out of your way? Like, cause you're not seeing, and these balls are right down the middle. Like, give me, let me give you a better look and I'll try to like change my stance and to just give them a better look. And I feel yeah, like that's a fine line. Like you can't, be like like rude and you can't like say something as a strike if it's actually a ball because then they're like all right this guy's full of shit like i can't listen to him the rest of the game yeah exactly they're, they, they go they like umpires now they they look at their games way more than they used to be yeah and like sometimes i'll go right when the game starts i'm like hey let's be a little generous today like yeah. you know i got a i got a guy that has to paint the corners like we have a little feel of today's game please and Especially like, oh, I like it. with where catching is too. Like you guys are such good receivers now where it's like, that's such a big part of the game. Mixing that in with, like you said, a hundred mile an hour splinkers, whatever, whatever the word was like, <laughs> I mean, it's fuck, like, it's funny. I'm saying that now because I'm not in the box, but like, that's fucking hard to do. And for the most part, those guys are really, really good. Umpiring's the best yeah. it's ever been. Yeah. Which it's is crazy. It's the best ever been. It's the most games. accurate it's ever been in the history of the game, and it's just really, really hard. Jan, I have a question. Do you, when you're back there, do you feel like you're like when you're catching balls? Do you feel like you're ninety nine percent accurate with what you think the call is, or are there times when you get back in the dugout and look at the video and you go, "Oh shit, I thought that was a strike. It was just off," or "I thought that was a ball. It was right on the corner." Yeah, um, from what I came up with as a strike zone, I'm like 98% accurate. And now, because there's a lot of times, like, we'll go and look, and they have the, like, imaginary box, and I'll catch a ball, and I will, like, you know, like, you do the, the zoom in, and you're like, that looks like it's hitting that line. And then the, <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the thing just, is, like, on this side. But it's coming back like, this way, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I would say um, no. I I would definitely go a little bit lower than nine because I'm like a lot of times I don't realize that. Um, so like there's times I'll, I'll like try to like really catch myself like looking at like where the where it's crossing the plate. Um, but again, like you said, like the or the balls are like moving way more than they have been. There's a lot of like throwers now, so like I will be set up in and they just throw the ball and it's like middle away and i'm like <laughs> like they're supposed to make the call on that back in the day i say that's a terrible i'm sorry I, you can oh, find me for that. Oh, i know back oh, in the I day. Know. early on they, guys would not call anything on like like cross-ups like there there'd be umpires like oh you're not gonna get that call but now they're they're very adamant on like having to make that call i man i'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pay a fine to the compound here for using that that language right there. I'm sorry. 